Hi everyone, I'm Nikunj Bajaj, co-founder and CEO at TrueFoundry, and today I'm going to show how TrueFoundry helps you train, deploy, and monitor your machine learning models completely on your own infrastructure while following some of the best software engineering practices and doing it in a very developer-friendly manner. So let's dive right into it. To begin with, we'll show how TrueFoundry integrates with your own infrastructure and tooling. And uh, this typically involves an initial setup process where your DevOps team can go ahead and connect their existing Kubernetes clusters, which could be running on any different clouds. And uh, like they, can, they could specify the different prod or dev environments. And uh, once they have connected that cluster, they could basically install an agent that TrueFoundry would provide or a Helm chart that TrueFoundry would provide, uh, which would allow us to manage this Kubernetes cluster directly from this UI. Similarly, they could go ahead and connect their uh, Docker registries. Uh, and we have integrations with most of the common Docker registries here. They could go ahead and integrate their Git or Bitbucket repositories, secret stores that they are managing, and any blob storage where we would um, manage your own data sets or model files, etc. So that way, literally everything that TrueFoundry interfaces with remains within your cloud, within your infrastructure, and we completely integrate with your existing tooling. Now, after this setup is done, they would basically be creating a bunch of workspaces. And think of these workspaces as an abstraction on top of Kubernetes namespace, where the, the Kubernetes cluster can be broken down by different teams or different individuals or different projects, and they can start doing their deployments and model training on these workspace. And pretty much from a developer standpoint, this workspace is the only thing that is needed to, uh, to interface with the infrastructure. And there are a few other things that the DevOps team can do on top of these uh, uh, workspaces, where they can set up limits that this particular workspace should not uh, incur or should not require more than these many CPUs or memory or whatever. And you could also manage an entire access control at the level of workspace. So that also allows to remove a lot of friction that happens between allocating some data sets or by mistake leaking a data set or a model to someone who is not supposed to have access to that. Now let's focus on our developer side about how they train and deploy their machine learning models. So typically, a developer would care about being able to deploy a service, like an API endpoint, a job, or a model on the platform. Now, they could do this either using the UI, where they will go ahead and select the workspace that's allocated to them. And uh, in this workspace, they can select uh, whichever is the GitHub repository that they want to deploy things from. And uh, they could either, if they already have a Docker file, that's great. If not, they could also connect like Python code. And as a developer, basically, they have a lot of control on how they, uh, how much resources they want to allocate. If they want to use like a GPU-based serving, they can select GPUs uh, for their models. And uh, further details around how they want to roll out uh, a particular service in production. So they have a lot of those details. Now, every single service that's ever deployed by TrueFoundry, you would basically get an API endpoint that you could share with your, uh, with your uh, product team who will go ahead and uh, uh, integrate the API endpoint, or you, would, you can also get a UI where people can go, go, go ahead and play around with the model that you have built out, okay? Um, now, the services that are deployed using TrueFoundry also have every version that is tracked, so it's version controlled by default, if you, and if you wanted to switch back to a previous version, it's literally just clicking on one button and hitting the submit, and you would roll back to a previous version of the service, and monitoring, logging, all of these things are enabled by default. Okay, now let's go ahead and see what are the things that you can do when you want to try deploying a job. Okay, so here on the job, let's assume that you have like a model training job that keeps running every time you get a new snapshot of the data. So each row here is basically a run that has happened when a new data set came in. You could also trigger these jobs manually and these are also parameterized. So let's say if you wanted to change a particular hyperparameter or a source file of the data, you could do that directly from the UI, trigger the job, and this would basically schedule a job that will run on a Kubernetes cluster, and that cluster will be, uh, will, uh, that, that, that node will be, that pod will be killed after the job is done, okay? And you could also compare the performance of these different runs of job over a period of time, where you can see that has your accuracy over a period of time declined or not. So, and like this, you could continue doing, uh, like, you know, you, you can also deploy your models uh, or, like, you know, uh, any Helm charts for more advanced use cases. Besides this, when you're training your machine learning model, you can also track every single experiment that you've been conducting on the platform. Um, and these experiments, um, you, could, you could again be tracking like you know, different things around uh, what type of 
model runs that you made? What are the metrics that you're logging here? What are the hyperparameters that, that was used to train the model? And if you have logged any graphs or anything, you could also be tracking those graphs here, like, like let's say your training curves, etc. And what data set that was used? What are the distribution of your training and test, test data when you train this model? So you're able to track a lot of details about every experiment. Now, to the end, I want to come back to just show a quick demo on the model registry that on TrueFont you could be tracking every single model and along with its version that you have uh, pushed through your training jobs. And with models, you can see like, you know, how you want to invoke them using your uh, Python APIs, what are the actual schema of the model if you have logged, uh, and you have all these details around the model that you could log, right? And lastly, 